look at the video later if you guys need it. All right, number one asks us to do this. We want to write the cosine of 3x in terms of the cosine of x alone. So that means we're going to start with the cosine of 3x. And ultimately, our final answer needs to be written in terms of just cosine of x. So we've got to get rid of the 3 on the inside with x there. Now, some of these answers, you guys, you might have a different answer that might be OK. right? So some of these are going to be um, expressed in different ways, depending on the way that we approach it. And we'll see that in a minute. Here's how I'm going to do this one. The cosine of 3x, how can we re -ex uh, express the cosine of 3x? Well, I'm going to say that the cosine of 3x could also be expressed as the sum of two angles, 2x and x. Right? Our goal, again, to get rid of that three on the inside of that cosine, we have to have our final answer only in terms of the cosine of x. Now, we can have multiples of the cosine of x. I could have two cosine x as my final answer, um, but it needs to be in terms of just cosine x. OK, once I've got that, now I, I can use the sum and difference um, properties in order to expand this, right? The cosine of a, some angle a plus b. That's cosine, cosine, sine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So I'm going to rewrite that cosine, cosine, cosine starts with a C. So does the word change. So we change the sign there. Sine, sine. And we keep moving. So our goal, again, we just want things in terms of cosine and cosine alone. So I've got to deal with a couple of things. One, I've got to clean up this cosine of 2x. And I've also got to deal with all these signs here. We can't have a sign in our final answer. So I'm going to expand using, again, um, some properties from our trig handout. I can expand the cosine of 2x and the sine of 2x um, using one of those double argument properties. So the cosine of 2x actually has three expansions, though. So you have to be really careful about what expansion we want to use. Only one of the cosine 2x expansions has only cosine in it. And that is 2 cosine squared minus 1. So we're going to make sure we use that expansion because that's the only expansion for the cosine of 2x that doesn't include sine. right? So the way that we choose um, the identities becomes really important in these types of questions. We are still multiplying that by the cosine of x, so we can't forget that. And then the sine of 2x, there's only one expansion for that. That's 2 sine x cosine x. And we're still multiplying that by that sine x. OK, so I'm just going to clean some things up. And then we'll see where we can go from there. I can distribute this cosine x into both of those terms. I get 2 cosine cubed minus wow. cosine x. And then also, these sine x's being multiplied together give me 2 sine squared x cosine x, right? And that's really important there. It's going to allow us to get rid of that last sign. All right, so we're here. I'm close. Cosine x is everywhere except for in one place, which is where we see that sine squared. So the last thing I need to do is I need to get rid of that sine squared. I can use the Pythagorean property to do that. The only thing I'm going to rewrite here then is this sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared. All right? No need to write the identities today. We're not doing proofs. So you just need to use them. All right. And then the very last thing is to simplify. We've got to combine like terms, make sure that everything looks good. So I am going to deal with this second term here. We're going to be really careful about the way that we distribute. And then I will see if I have any like terms to combine. So 2 cosine cubed minus cosine x. And then I'm going to have minus 2 cosine x plus 2 cosine cubed x. All right. Take a second. Make sure you get that line there. And then the last thing I can do is combine some like terms. So I've got cosine cubes here, and I also have just cosine x's. So I have a total of four cosine cubes and negative three cosine x's. All right, that's it. Final answer. We've got it down in terms of cosine and just cosine alone. 
And that's what we're looking for. All right, questions? Um, why is the cosine cubed allowed? Okay, so cosine cubed, let me get this back, is the same thing as saying cosine times cosine times cosine, right? So if I write it like that, it's just cosine. So we can take whatever we're looking for and raise it to a power. We can multiply it by three in the front, that's okay. But what we don't want is a different term, right? That cosine two X, that's not the same. It's a good question, okay. right? All right, other questions you guys? It's gonna be a little tricky, we'll see that as we go. Okay, let's take a look. Number two, I'm not gonna do all of these with you guys. I'm gonna give you some time to work through a couple on your own before we check the answers there. Number two looks like this. We've got the sine of 4x and we wanna write it in terms of just sine and cosine. So we can actually have both sine and cosine in our final answer, but we do need to take care of the four sitting in front of the x um, in order to get this down to the right terms that we need. So again, I've noted three possible answers here. We're gonna go through one solution. You don't need to write all different answers on your homework. I'm not gonna ask you for all possible answers on the test either. Um, but just note that there's three ways that we could go about doing this. Okay, so the sine of 4x, there's a couple of ways we can expand the sine of 4x. We could look at the sine of 4x as 2x plus 2x. We could also look at it as 2 times the angle 2x, right? Many different ways we could break that up. You could say technically x plus 3x as well. And it just makes it a little bit more complicated if you go that way. So you could use the composite identity here to break it up um, as the sum of a plus b, or we could use the double argument property for sine um, in terms of sine of two times two x. So I'm gonna use the double argument property here. I'm gonna expand this option. But again, those three possible answers come from the different steps we could take here. So the sine of two times two x, now this is my angle, okay? So two x is my angle, when I expand that, we're going to get 2 sine 2x cosine 2x. I have to preserve that angle. The only problem with that is our final answers have to be written in terms of just sine x and cosine x. We can't have that 2 on the inside either. So we're going to go one step further, and I'm going to then expand the sine of 2x and the cosine of 2x using, again, the double argument properties. So we've got that two sitting out front. The sine of two X again is gonna get expanded to the two sine X cosine X. And then cosine two X, this is where the three possible answers come in. Cosine two X has three different expansions. So it's really up to you guys which expansion you wanna choose. I'll go with cosine squared minus sine squared. Right? Just picked one. You could have picked any of the other ones. You would have gotten a correct answer. It would have just looked a little different. All right, and then all that's left is for me to distribute all of this into this binomial here, and then see if we have any like terms that we've got to combine. Okay, first term, we're gonna get four sine x cosine cubed x. And then the next term we're gonna get is minus four sine cubed x cosine x. We've now got our final answer in terms of just sine x and cosine x. We're good to go. Box that, one of those possible answers. I believe the answer key that I posted online, you guys will have all of the possible answers written out. I've got to double check that, but it should. Okay. I'm going to do these ones with you guys, and then I'm going to give you some time to work through the other ones before I walk through the solutions for those. So let's take a look at three, four, eight, and nine. These are a little bit shorter than one and two. Number three, we have the sine of 8x. We want to write this in terms of 4x and cosine 4x. Sorry, sine 4x, cosine 4x. So we've got to break the sine of 8x up into terms of sine 4x and cosine 4x. So here's how we can do this. I argue that the sine of 8x is equal the sine of two times four X. I'm doing this 
so that I now have an angle A that is 4x. That angle is the angle that I want in my final answer, okay? That's the only way I can get to 4x, right? You could do 4x plus 4x as well. That would work. Okay, so then with the expansion of the sine of 2 times an angle, we get 2 sine 4x cosine 4x. That's it. We're done. Box it. We've got our final answer in terms of sine 4x and cosine 4x now. All right, number four, similar, the cosine of 12x in terms of the cosine of 24x. So our final answer needs to have the angle 24x. So we've got to figure out a way to turn 12x into 24x somehow, somehow to relate those. So here's what I'm going to argue. The cosine of 12x is the same thing as saying the cosine of half the angle 24x. We have a half angle expansion for cosine. I picked that half angle again so that my final answer here is in terms of that angle 24x. So I'm just going to use the half angle expansion for cosine. That's plus or minus the square root of 1 half, 1 plus the cosine of 24x. That's as far as we can go. There's nothing to actually evaluate. We don't know what the angle x is actually. So that's all we can do. All right, last two. Cosine 100x in terms of cosine 50x. So I want the cosine of 100x to be rewritten in terms of the angle 50x. So I'm going to argue that the cosine of 100x can be re-expressed as the cosine of 2 times 50x. That's where I'm getting my final angle 50x. And now remember, cosine has three expansions for two times some angle. We've got to pick the right one. There's only one expansion that only includes cosine. Our final answer can't have sine. So we have to pick the right expansion. Otherwise, we're going to get a little stuck. OK, that expansion is going to be 2 cosine squared of our angle 50x minus 1. OK, number nine. Last one of these I'm going to do with you guys before I give you some time to work through a couple on your own. This one's a little tricky, OK? We want to start with the cotan of 16x. And our final answer has to be represented in terms of tangent. So now we're turning um, a trig function into its reciprocal, which is not something we've done on these other examples yet. So we're starting with the cotangent of 16x. We want to rewrite it in terms of the tangent of 8x alone. So there's two things we have to change here. We actually have to change cotangent into tangent. And then we also have to change the angle from 16x into 8x. So there's two things we have to do here instead of one like the other problems that we've worked through. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is work on that cotangent. I know that the cotangent of 16x is the same thing as saying 1 over the tangent of 16x. OK, so we've handled turning cotangent into tangent. One step, use the reciprocal property. We've got cotangent into tangent now. The next step is trying to get that angle rearranged into 8x. So a couple ways we could do it, actually. But I'll argue that the tangent of 16x can be re-expressed as 2 times 8x. You could say 8x plus 8x as well. The double argument property for tangent comes directly from the sum and difference properties of tangent. Actually, the double argument properties come from the sum and difference of all of them. And then we can just expand. OK, we have an expansion for the tangent of 2 times some angle. Our angle is the angle that we want, so 8x. All right, that expansion looks like this, 2 tan 8x over 1 minus tan squared of 8x. 
Simplify, you can't leave a fraction looking like that. We just flip the numerator and the denominator there. Final answer. We turned cotangent into tangent and we turned that angle 16x into 8x. Okay, here's what you guys are working through. You don't have a neighbor. Maybe you do. Try 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12. 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12. And then we're going to finish 13 together. And that's it for lecture today. So take a good chunk of time. I'm going to give you guys like four minutes, maybe five. Do those and then we'll check our answers. Now is a good time to ask a question. Throw it in the chat if you need.
Okay, just to see where everybody's at. If you're done, raise your hand on Zoom, please. I don't want to rush this. If you're not done, I don't want to move on yet. Raise your hand on Zoom when you're done. Thank you, everybody. Keep working. If you have finished all the way through 12, give 13 a try. We're going to go through that, but just give it a try if you've got some time. Alrighty, guys. Did they get rid of the raise hand feature in Zoom? I don't know. It's weird. Everybody's saying yes now instead of instead of raise hand. Interesting. Thanks, Luke. Okay, let's go through these answers, and then I want to go through thirteen, which is I think one of the trickier ones. And then um, if you have any questions about the proofs, we can go through this. All right. So five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, on the screen right now. Check your answers there. Different ways to go. Number five, you had to use the correct expansion for the tangent of half an angle. It's that one that we don't use when we're actually plugging numbers in. All right, check your work. Unmute yourself if you've got questions on any of them.
questions? Uh, Ms. Funk? Yep. Really quick, sorry. Um, for number 11, is it okay if you did um, the same, like you got one minus cosine eight, uh, 18x over two? Yeah, that's perfectly fine as well. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions, you guys? I'm gonna move on. Okay, let's do 13, and then you guys are going to do the back of this handout. So 13 is the trickiest. Here's my suggestion to you guys with number 13. Uh, I would consider writing small, okay? So as we go through this last problem, just, just write a little bit small because the work is a little, little crazy here. Okay, number 13, last one, cotangent of 20x. We want to write this in terms of the cotangent of 10x alone. So we're not um, changing cotangent into tangent like we had to do in number 9. Uh, but we want our final answer to be in terms of a different angle. So I want to turn 20x into 10x, and we're going to run into some problems here. So we're going to start with the cotangent of 20x. And what I'm going to do is I am going to represent the cotangent of 20x as the cotangent of 2 times 10x. So we have the cotangent of 2 times some angle, all right? And that angle, 10x, is the angle that we actually want our final answer expressed in terms of. Now, here's the problem that we run into. We can't expand the tangent or uh, the cotangent of 2 times 10x. Um, there's only an expansion for the tangent of 2 times an angle, not the cotangent of 2 times an angle. So the first thing we have to do is we actually have to convert this into tangent, do the expansion, and then we have to reconvert tangent into cotangent to get our final answer. So the cotangent of 2 times 10x is going to be the same thing as 1 over the tangent of 2 times 10x. And now we have an expansion that we can actually apply um, <clears throat> for the tangent of 2 times some angle. Okay, now I'm going to skip a math step here because we did it in number 9. I know that if I have 1 over the tangent of 2 times an angle, all I have to do is take the expansion for the tangent of 2 times that angle and flip it. Okay, so I'm going to have what would go normally on the numerator in the denominator and what's normally in the denominator in the numerator. Okay, so that's going to look like this 1 minus tan squared of 10x over 2 tan 10x. Right, in general, that's how we can expand the cotangent of 2 times an angle, some angle. Just flip the expansion for the tangent of 2 times that angle. Okay. But our final answer has to be in terms of cotangent of 10x, not tangent. So we've got to get rid of all of these tangents. I've got to find a way to clear all those tangents out so that our final answer is back in terms of cotangent. So a couple of ways that you guys could do this. I think the quickest and the easiest way, in order to get rid of tangent, you multiply by the reciprocal, right? In order to get rid of cosine, you multiply by its reciprocal. Same thing for sine, multiply by its reciprocal. So we're going to clear these tangents by multiplying by its reciprocal. Now, I have a tan squared on the top. I have a tangent in the denominator, which means we need two cotangents in order to get rid of everything. OK, so I'm going to multiply by a fancy form of 1 that is made up of the cotangent squared of 10x. Has to be 10x. We've got to keep the angles the same, right? The cosine of x can be canceled by the secant of x. The cosine of 5x has to be canceled by the secant of 5x. So we keep the angles the same there. And then what happens after we do some math, all right, I'm going to distribute that cotangent squared of 10x into both the terms on the numerator. I get cotangent squared of 10x minus 1 tan squared 10x times cotan squared 10x is just 1 there. This is all over 2 times the cotangent of 10x. OK, be careful there. There's only one tangent 10x in the denominator. We're multiplying by two cotangents. So only one of the cotangents um, gets rid of that tangent. We're still left with one cotangent in the denominator. That's it. Once you've got your final answer in terms of the cotangent of 10x and it's simplified, we're done. Okay. These are not the types of questions that are going to be on the proofs test, right? So the proofs test next Thursday is just strictly proofs. You guys have 50 minutes to do five proofs. Um, 
this will be on the applications portion, which is the questions where you're adding like the inverse sign of three fifths plus something else. Yeah. All right, so you guys are finishing up page 17 of your student note packet. And then to that, you're gonna add um, the middle columns of that 7-5B homework assignment. And that's what's due tomorrow. So that's what we're working through for the rest of the period, you guys. If you have questions on the proofs from this weekend, please stick around and we can go through those. Otherwise, you guys are welcome to log off and get started on your homework. The Zoom will be open all periods. If you wanna come back and ask a question, um, you are more than welcome to do so. Have a good Thank morning, you, so you guys. Much. Welcome, bye, bye guys. Thank you, Ms. Ronk. Thank you.